When Vernon finally arrived home with Marcella and little Jerry to their apartment on Scott Street in San Francisco, he was so joyful. Marcella couldn't believe her husband was finally home. Vernon came home just after his 24th birthday. He was already a hardened combat veteran who survived the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor while serving on the U.S. Yes, West Virginia, BB-48. Little Jerry kept saying repeatedly, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Marcella was busy in the kitchen while Vernon played with his son. He and Jerry seemed to enjoy each other. They laughed while Vernon talked to his son with love in his heart. Vernon loved the Christmas tree and decorations. Marcella put a white blanket around the table where the Christmas tree was. This reminded him of Christmas in St. Paul, but with some sadness. He missed his family in Minnesota, but was happy not to be around them. Christmas was an, always a disaster. Back home, he mused with a smirk on his face and said to Marcella, I don't want to go home to St. Paul, not now or ever. Vernon was overwhelmed with tearful joy while hugging and kissing Marcella and little Jerry for a long time. It was a very special time that Christmas in 1942, the Sparks family was born. Marcella had a little radio in the apartment too. That was special. They could listen to Nat King Cole and Frank Sinatra singing favorite Christmas songs. Little Jerry loved Jingle Bells with Gene Autry the most. President Franklin Roosevelt's firm and reassuring voice on the radio was so important to all Americans during that time Americans fighting men and families around the world trusted their commander in chief. They knew President Roosevelt loved and cared about them and their families. America would win World War II, Vernon thought, as his mind was distracted from the brief joy of living in the moment during the holidays with his young family. Vernon couldn't relax. He was full of anxiety, he couldn't sleep. Marcella was worried about his nightmares and nervousness. He was soaked in sweat and shook uncontrollably at night. The first night Vernon had one of his frequent nightmares, Marcella woke up scared and jumped out of bed. He was yelling, close the hatch, close that hatch, sailor. Vernon would be forever guilty about having to leave the man in the brig on board ship. The Marine that lost the keys to the brig was killed. Vernon would never forgive himself for that. So Marcella tried to wake him with a hand on his chest and a hug, but he pushed her away. While she fell back on the floor, Vernon punched holes in the wall and yelled as loud as he could, Japs, the Japs are bombing us. Marcella was frightened for the first time while little Jerry was screaming with fear. She knew then what she already expected. Vernon was sick. Marcella then knew for sure her husband would be fighting a war with himself. She also knew she and the kids would be his shipmates fighting alongside him. She knew this instinctively. What she didn't know, though, is the entire Sparks family would be sick from World War II for generations to come. It was the high cost of war. Vernon was also drinking too much upon his return. Sailors could stay sober at sea, but stayed mostly drunk while on liberty. It was the only thing that could help keep the pain of war at a safe distance, for a little while at least. 
but the nightmares and anxiety shaking and sweating profusely returned every night while Vernon was home. It was no picnic at the beach, Vernon thought, as he contemplated going back to sea. My country needs me, he would say to Marcella with tears in his eyes. It became very hard for Vernon to be home and around others who didn't know much or understand his scary behaviors and troubling thoughts. It scared the holy shit out of me too, he would say to Marcella. I don't know what's wrong with me, honey. He would say with his hands on his sweating face and shaking hands covering his face. Marcella didn't understand panic attacks then. I'm so sorry, he told Marcella with trepidation just about every day while home on Liberty that Christmas, 1942. Vernon's mind was 24 by seven locked and loaded. He would soon return to the Pacific on the USS Belgrove in February, 1943. But he couldn't talk to Marcella about that. Not once, not any time, not ever, he thought with a sad smile while hugging and kissing Marcella and Jerry. Vernon loved Marcella and little Jerry with all his heart and soul. He was afraid he would not come home again. This would be an all too brief visit for every sailor preparing for the Pacific War. It was that way back then, America was at war. Vernon also knew there was a 50-50 chance he would not return home alive. But he didn't talk about that either. Vernon H. Sparks, BMC, USS Belgrove, LSD 2, 1943-1945. So I'll leave you with that. And I do this so that Folks out there in any generation, young ones and old ones like me, boomers, all of you, can get some context for what America was going through back then. And maybe it'll help to put democracy in context, put our roots in context, to help us all talk to each other again Help us all solve problems again, because we'll never win in, in America. We'll never, ever win if we don't do it together for all of us, not just some of us. See you next time. Pearl Harbor Day is just around the corner. I'm still going. <laughs>